Every culture talks about spirits. But what if they are not just stories? Some people say they have seen ghosts. Others say they have heard them. So, what have you felt? Science explains a lot, but some things still whisper from the dark. They say spirits don't rest until they are heard. So, are you listening? Okay, real talk. I don't think there is anyone on this floating rock who hasn't heard at least one creepy ghost story. From Hollywood's Annabelle and Amityville horror to India's haunted Bangad fort, these stories are popular everywhere. People talk about ghosts with both fear and curiosity. Some people are like, OMG, ghosts are totally real. And others are like, okay, Caspar, go drink some water and go back to bed. So, ghosts, do you believe in them? Maybe, maybe not. Whatever be the case, today we are looking at ghosts from the lens of science. Hello, I am Anand. This is Pale Blue Thoughts, where we worship the one true God, scientific reason. If you ask 100 people what ghosts are, you will get 150 versions. Because there are that many versions of what a ghost is. But the OG belief? Ghosts are spirits of the dead who somehow didn't log out properly. They're just chilling here, haunting houses, Cemeteries, hotels, dolls, the works. They hang around, vibe in a world and sometimes interact with the living. But not all ghost stories are the same. When we think of ghosts, the first image that comes to mind is often what is called apparitions. Ghosts that can be seen. These might be a full human body or sometimes only partially visible like bodies floating without legs. These are the I saw a ghost walking down the hallway kind. Sometimes full body, sometimes just floating heads. The forms can vary. It might not always be a clear human shape. These are apparitions, visible ghosts. Then there are mere presences. It is a presence, an unseen force, but you know it is there. You can't see it, but you can feel its presence. Ever heard that I am not alone in this room feeling or felt that weird chill in a room. There you go. You have just experienced a ghostly presence. Another type involves unexplained sounds or movements. Doors closing by themselves, dogs barking without apparent reason, bells clanging in the distance or voices without bodies. There are also concepts where a spirit is believed to possess another person's body or an object. Though not typically that, the Manjuliga of Bhulbalaya, Emni Rose, Annabelle all fall into that kind of a category. Goes inside people or objects. Creepy but popular AF. So people report seeing ghosts in many ways as presences, unexplained movements or sounds or as fully or partially visible forms. All ghost stories share this characteristic. So how much truth is there to these stories? Now let us start talking science. Many people talk about ghosts in terms of if there is a positive, then there must be a negative. By positive, they mean God. They believe that if God exists, then there must also be a negative force, an equal or opposite power, which manifests as ghosts, spirits or demons, and that these are real. Balance bro, balance. If we examine these stories of ghost experiences, people seeing, hearing or interacting with ghosts, one thing is clear. All these experiences contradict the laws of nature as we understand them today. They do not align with our scientific knowledge of how nature works. For example, if someone claims to have seen a person walking or moving without their feet touching the ground, sort of like gliding. According to the fundamental laws of physics, for movement to occur, a force must be at play. When a person walks, the force is the reaction force they get from the ground, opposite 
to the force exerted by their leg muscles on the ground. Without this force, they will not be able to move. If you have walked on a wet bathroom floor, you know what happens when there is no friction. You slip like a cartoon. You can't move without pushing against something. So moving without legs touching the ground? No cap. How about floating? To float against gravity, you need an upward force to counteract gravity's downward pull. We see rockets, airplanes, drones hovering. All these require a force to counteract gravity. Now consider the very act of seeing how you see something and in what form you perceive it depends on how light from that object reaches you. Seeing requires light bouncing off something. Now unless the goals are some solid object, you cannot see them. If it is about hearing sounds, there must be a vibration that reaches you. Sounds don't exist without a source. Sound waves are created when a physical object vibrates and these waves must reach your ear, be converted into an auditory signal and then reach your brain, which processes the sound for you. So sound without a source is impossible. Similarly, a ghost that can pass through walls without hindrance, like floating through them to enter a room and harm you, cannot interact with your body. The walls of a house and your body are both made of the same kind of atoms. If a ghost can pass through a wall, it means that whatever the ghost is made of, it cannot interact with the atoms that make up the wall. If it could interact, it wouldn't be able to pass through. And if it can pass through without interacting, it cannot interact with your body or any other object in your room. Therefore, it cannot harm you or exert any force on you or lift an object. Because for any of these actions to occur, the ghost would need to be able to interact with material objects. If it could, it wouldn't be able to pass through walls. Get it? Man, did I confuse you? Okay, let me simplify it. If they can pass through a wall, they cannot touch you. If they can touch you, they cannot pass through a wall. Pick a struggle. What all this means is that the descriptions we have of ghosts are contradictory to the fundamental principles of physics. Basically, the way ghosts are described doesn't match anything we know about how the world works. Furthermore, many people have conducted ghost hunts in places reported to be haunted or where ghosts have been seen. They have used various techniques to find and photograph them, setting up cameras with night vision, EMF meters, the whole shebang. Everything except actual logic. And guess what they have found? Nothing. Zero proof. No ghost pics, no solid evidence, nada. After searching for so many years, no evidence for ghosts has been discovered. Even today, there are many people who call themselves ghost hunters who visit haunted places and try to find that non-existent ghost. And their videos get a million views while I have been uploading science content for years and barely cracked 5 digits in subscribers. Forget unboxing the silver play button, 10k subs appear to be an impossible dream. I'm not mad. I am jealous. <laughs> Moving on, as mentioned earlier, many of the properties and behavioral patterns attributed to ghosts are inconsistent with known scientific principles. Ghosts are supposed to be dead people's spirit, right? But spoiler alert, there is zero proof that anything like a soul or consciousness sticks around after death. We have already roasted that idea in past videos. Go binge those if you miss them. Bottom line, from a scientific perspective, the concept of a ghost is purely a figment of imagination. Even so, many people have stories of seeing ghosts or having experiences that they attribute to ghosts. So are they all lying? It is unlikely that so many people would be lying about this. So, how do these stories come about? Certainly, behind many of these reported experiences, there are scientifically explainable phenomena. That is, instead of asking do ghosts exist from a scientific standpoint, it is more appropriate to ask 
how do ghost experiences happen or what are the reasons behind people thinking ghost exists let's look at them now our brains are sneaky little gremlins here is how they mess with us ever wake up and feel like your body is totally frozen that is sleep paralysis your brain is awake but your body is still in sleep mode it does this to stop you from acting out dreams and hurting yourself but when you're stuck like that doesn't it feel like a ghost is holding you down creepy but totally normal lucid dreaming you're dreaming but you know you're dreaming or worse you half wake up and your dream world is still glitching into your real one it's trippy your brain is literally mixing reality and fantasy at the same time hallucinations your brain builds reality from your senses sight sound touch etc but when things are dark silent or your senses are messed up it fills in the blanks that is when you see shadows move or hear your name whispered your brain is in broken it is just guessing sometimes it guesses wrong happens to everyone pareidolia this is another very natural human tendency to find non-existent patterns in our surroundings this can happen with sound or sight you see patterns in randomness like faces in clouds or hearing a name in white noise super common super misleading many new mothers for example often hear their baby crying and go to check only to find the baby sleeping peacefully they truly believe they heard the crying so these things constantly happen in our brains sometimes it is not even in your brain it is your environment there are low frequency sound below 20 hertz that our ears cannot perceive as sound because the frequency is too low they are called infrasound for example if you stand in front of a loudspeaker playing music you can feel the vibrations of the sound waves on your chest like a force hitting it since our ears can hear the sound we know where it is coming from but if it's a very low frequency sound our ears won't recognize it as sound but the vibrations will still be felt by your body this can sometimes make you feel like someone is grabbing you or that there is a presence around you like the ghostly presence that i mentioned earlier spooky but real also in the dim or flickering light our brain tends to play tricks on us we often see shapes or faces that aren't really there due to pareidolia if you notice most people say they saw ghosts that match the kind of ghosts they already heard of in their stories basically we see what we already expect to see so even if ghosts aren't real people can still feel like they have had ghost experiences our brains are built in a way that create these moments especially when we are scared tired or in the dark that doesn't mean everyone is lying when they talk about seeing ghosts sure some might make things up but many of those experiences can be explained by science without needing to believe in actual ghosts even with all this many people still argue that there are many reasons behind ghosts that science simply hasn't discovered yet however such people should always consider this if ghosts exist it means that all the fundamental principles we learn through science are wrong but we can see these principles at work we can verify them through experiments and observations and we constantly use technologies that directly apply these principles we literally built planes rockets and phones based on these rules So yeah, ghosts flopping through walls and tossing chairs don't quite fit in. So rather than saying these theories are wrong, it is more reasonable to believe that these experiences are just perceptions. Remember Occam's razor? It's honestly wild that it's 2025 and I'm still out here explaining why bhoot preet are in real. Ghosts packed up their bags and dipped around the time we got proper electricity. and street lights and now a fresh batch of podcasters and social media paranormal experts with three collective brain cells in total are out there resurrecting ghost tales 
trying to convince people that there is a chudayal in every corner and a booth behind every sofa. It is getting ridiculous. Now don't get me wrong, I adore a good horror flick. Dim the lights, munch some popcorn and scream at the jump scare. It is entertainment, pure and simple. It is a fantastic genre that caters to a love for spooky fun. But to genuinely believe in real life ghosts? That is not a leap of faith. That is taking a U-turn from common sense without using indicators. So yeah, curl up in your bed, hug your pillow and sleep tight. Ghosts? Nah fam. But you know what is real? EMIs and credit card bills. And unfortunately, they are too real. So, see you in the next one. Peace out nerds.